Hey guys, day five problems. So we'll start with number one, 62.1 grams, which happens to be one mole of ethylene glycol, which I'm going to abbreviate EG for simplicity. It's dissolved in 250 grams of water. Now just note that this 250 grams, that happens to be three sig fig, because of the decimal point here. Calculate, what are we going to calculate? Mole fraction molality and weight percent or mass percent weight right weight percent is the same thing as mass percent all right so we have three things to one that's still one two and three all right so we have three things to calculate and the first thing mole fraction so if i calculate mole fraction that would be the mole fraction of ethylene glycol is equal to moles of ethylene glycol over the moles of ethylene glycol plus the moles of water. Okay, so I have moles of ethylene glycol right there. Right, done, check. Check, moles of water. Well, I have grams of water. Can I take that to moles? You betcha. So we have 250 grams of H2O multiplied by, we know water is 18.02 grams of water, is one mole of water. So that leads us with, what, 13.87 moles? I'll do 13.9, but let's use 13.87 because that's one extra sig fig moles. H2O. Now I think we can do this. So we have uh, the mole fraction of ethylene glycol would be equal to one mole of ethylene glycol. It's used, getting the habit of using good sig figs. One over one plus our 13.87. And so that gives me a mole fraction of 0.0672. And there's no units, right? There's no units for the mole fraction. So there's the mole fraction. There's number one. All right, number two, molality. Moles per kilogram, correct? So number two little m for molality would be moles of ethylene glycol all over kilograms of H2O. So moles ethylene glycol of course is 1 or R1 and kilograms of water would be 0 0.250 kilograms of water. All right, so that would be what? 4 So there is our molality for number two. Number three, mass percent. So for mass percent, I need my mass of ethylene glycol over the total mass. So the mass percent is going to be what? The mass of ethylene glycol would be 62.1 grams over 62.1 grams plus the 250 grams of water and you do that addition first times it by a hundred percent and if I do that I think I get 19.9 and there's number one Number two, you have one mole of sugar and 125 milliliters of solution. Calculate the concentration in units of molarity. Calculate the molarity. All right, so molarity is moles, in this case sugar, per total volume. So I have 
one point zero zero moles and volume and now it's in liters right so that's is zero point one two five zero liters and so if we do that it looks like we're gonna get eight I have three sig figs. So that's it. Now, if you ever get a question like this on a test, this can happen, right? We do hard ones together, we do easy ones together. If easy ones do show up, they're designed to be like quick, simple. This is just can you do quick molarity? Yes, boom. All right? Don't overcomplicate your problems. All right, some of us are very, very good at that. Number three, you have 10 moles of sugar. So this is, I'm going to go here, 10 moles of sugar solution. That is a ratio. What volume, there's your question, of this, what volume of this solution do you need to have? Here's your amount, two moles of sugar. So we have an amount there. So we have a ratio, an amount, and we're looking for the volume. So we always start with my amount. 2.00 moles of sugar. Now my ratio here is 10.0 M, which is the same thing as 10.0 moles of sugar per one liter of solution, right? That's what my molarity comes out to be. And sometimes I find that writing this out for some of us makes all the difference in the world. Some of us, we don't need to. We just see it and go, right? So whether you're just the one that sees this and go, right, and you, you know exactly what to do, you barely need to write anything down versus somebody who needs to write out everything, anywhere in between, I'm happy, okay? Whatever works for you because it's your process, your learning process, okay? times so what goes on the bottom well it has to be our 10 moles of sugar and one liter of solution and that works out beautifully right so it turns out to be what 0.2 0 0.2 I wanted to change to red 0 0.200 liters of solution 200 milliliters either way either way works so that's number three. Number four, lead's toxic metal that affects the central nervous system. A lead contaminated water sample contains another ratio, 0.1011% lead by mass. All right, how much water in milliliters? There's your question. How much water in milliliters contains, here's your amount, 150 milligrams of lead. Gives you a density of one. Okay. So, the density, I'm going to write the density out to be what? This density is 1.0 grams of solution per one milliliter of solution. All right? the mass percent here, this is 0 0.0011 grams of lead per... Um, 100 grams a solution. That's what the mass percent means, right? Okay, so where's my amount? So the green number is my amount, right? The 150 milligrams of lead. Now, we know that there is a thousand milligrams of lead and one gram of lead. And then we know we have 0 0.011 grams of lead. Oh, I missed a zero. Let's try that again. 0 0.011 grams of lead per 100 grams of solution. And then we know that for every one gram of solution, there is one, well, there's just one, which is one, one milliliter of solution. 
Okay, and so if we do this math, I get 13,600 milliliters, or 14,000 milliliters, which happens to be 14 liters. So there you go. So again, the only the difference that we're not used to is this pink uh, ratio from Chem One, at least. All right, number five. The, what is the percent by mass concentration of glucose in a solution made by dissolving 5.5 grams of glucose in 78.2 grams of water? Well, mass percent, we get mass percent of glucose, I'm just going to call it G, grams of G all over grams of G plus grams of H2O times 100%, correct? So, five point five grams of glucose, five point five grams, and seventy eight point two grams. Well, if we do that, we get I get six point six. There's number five. We're doing good. Number six. A solution contains phosphoric acid, or solution of phosphoric acid was made by dissolving eight grams of phosphoric acid in 100 milliliters of water. Calculate the mole fraction. Okay, so mole fraction, I'm calculating the mole fraction. And just so we know the mole fraction of H3PO4 moles of H3PO4 over the total moles which is moles of H3PO4 PO4 plus the moles of H2O right okay that's what we're looking for so I have 8 grams of phosphoric acid so if I take my 8.00 grams of H3PO4 one mole of H3PO4 has a molar mass of, I believe it's 98 even. Let me just double check that. So we have 1.01 .01 times 3 plus 30.97 plus 16 times 4. 98.00, yeah, works out beautifully. And if we do this math, we get 0 0.0816 moles of phosphoric acid. Okay, then we have 100 milliliters of water. So 100.0 milliliters of H2O. We know the density, there is one milliliter of water, is one gram of water. Well, let's make that three sig figs. And the reason I can do that is I have three sig figs. And then there's 18.02 grams of water in one mole of water that leaves us with 5.55 moles of water. All right, so our mole fraction is phosphoric acid. Looks like it's 0 0.0816 all over 0 0.0816 plus 5.55. And there's no units to this, and I get 0. 0, 1, 4, 5. That's my mole fraction. And that's it. Number 7. You got a soft drink that's bottled at 25 degrees Celsius, contains CO2, 5 atmospheres over the liquid. 
Assuming the partial pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere is 4 times 10 to the negative 4, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of carbon dioxide in the soda both before and after the bottle is open. It gives you the Henry's Law constant for CO2 is 3.1 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter atmosphere at 25 degrees Celsius. So Henry's Law. Henry's Law, that is S equals KH times P, right? So I have before and after. So before open, and I have an after open. All right, so before it opens, I have a constant here. All right, there's my constant, I got a constant. I'm looking for the solubility of the gas. This is what I'm looking for. Pressures. I have two. I have five and four times 10 to four. So I have before is five and after is four times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, let's solve. S equals K H times P. So S equals K. 3.1 times 10 to negative third. Whoa. Moles per liter times atmosphere. Multiplied by 5.0 atmospheres. So that means the solubility before is going to be equal to uh, 1.2 times 10 to negative 2 moles per liter or molarity. Not bad. After S equals KH times the pressure. So S would equal 3.1 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter times atmospheres. Oh, atmospheres on the bottom, excuse me. Multiply by 4.0 times 10 to the negative four atmospheres. So that means that solubility afterwards would be 1.2 times 10 to the negative six moles per liter. That's quite a bit. I messed up here. This is 1.5. Sorry about that. 3 times 5 is 15, right? So 1.5 times 10 to negative 2 versus 1.2 times 10 to negative 6. So negative 6, that's 10 to the 4th times different. A lot comes out. So that's number 7. Number 8. A solution prepared by mixing one gram of ethanol with 100 grams of water to a final volume of 101 milliliters. Calculate the molarity, mass percent, mole fraction, and molality of ethanol in this solution. Holy cow. We got a lot. One, two, three, and four. Holy moly. Molarity. Well, ethanol. So let's go with ethanol. I have 1.00 grams of ethanol. Which I'm going to make it, well, we'll just do it that way, CH3CH2OH. We know that one mole, right, sometimes we'll write it as C2H5OH as well, a little easier. i you know it's an ethanol. Over, well, the molar mass of ethanol, you have 12.01 times 2 plus 1.01 times 5 plus 16, which is, oh, I didn't, I did something wrong there, ah, uh, yes, times, forty-six point oh eight grams of C2H5OH, right, and that will give me one divided by that answer 0 0.0217 moles of now sometimes we'll abbreviate this as ETOH for ethanol okay just so you know so I have moles so for number one here Moles per liter, 0 0.0217 moles of ethanol, 0 0.101 liters, 
and we get what 0.215 0 0.215 molar ethanol beautiful number one's done mass percent well mass percent that one's pretty straightforward now two right mass percent would be the mass of ethanol over total mass T-A-L spell correctly times 100 percent so the mass would be 1.00 gram all over 1 gram plus 100 grams times 100 percent so that's 1 divided by 101 basically times 100 percent which would be 0.99 0 0.990 percent it's almost 1 percent ethanol E T O H. perfect mole fraction well do I have the mole right so the mole fraction of ethanol would equal moles no come on moles moles of ethanol all over total moles So my moles of ethanol would be 0 0.0217, 0 0.0217 plus moles of water. I didn't get moles of water. What's the moles of water? Well, I have 100 grams of water. We know that there's 18.02 grams of H2O in one mole. So 100 divide 18.02 5.55 and so that mole fraction would be 0.0217 divided by 0.0217 plus 5.55 I get 0.00389 not a lot of ethanol in there and finally last but not least the molality little m which is moles of ethanol per kilogram of h2o so my moles of ethanol 0 0.0217 moles and the kilograms of water was 100 grams, which would be 0.1 kilograms. So that gives us 0 0.217 molality ethanol. That's number eight. That's quite a lot for number eight. Okay, but that's, that's the units, and we might need to come up with those units. They all represent the same solution. Kind of neat. Number nine. The electrolyte in all automobile lead storage batteries is a 3.75 molar sulfuric acid solution that has a density of 1.230 grams per milliliter. All right. So I have this guy and this guy. We're calculating the mass percent and molality. So two things. One and two. All right. So first, 1.230 grams of solution per one milliliter of solution, and and 3.75 moles of H2SO4 per one liter of solution. That's what our ratios, right? Those are our ratios. We're taking those two ratios and we're making it into two different ratios. All right. Now, the best way to do this, because we have ratios, we don't have an amount. So I'm missing an amount. Guess what? You can pick any amount you want. You can pick your favorite number. Let's say it's 5.2. I don't know what your favorite number is. Right? Maybe it's 10. 
I'm going to pick one liter. I am going to assume one liter. Because if I assume one liter, that makes things really, really nice. So in one liter, in one liter, I have 3.75 moles of H2SO4. Right? It's pretty good, isn't it? So, we know 3.75 moles of H2SO4. We know that one mole of H2SO4, if you do the molar mass, I get 9809 grams of H2SO4. And again, I use two sig fig or two decimals. So I use 1.01 .01 for hydrogen. I use 3207 for sulfur and 16 for oxygen. I'm using two decimals when I do this. It's not going to be that big of a difference if you use more. When I was in your shoes, I had to use every number on the periodic table I was given. For hydrogen, I'd be using 1.00794 because I thought it would be more accurate. It's it's not, right? We're sig figs. Didn't fully understand them back then. All right, so I get 36.7.8. Eight grams of sulfuric acid. So I have the mass of sulfuric acid in my one liter solution. So in one liter, we have one liter is 1,000 milliliters of solution. And we know that for every one milliliter of solution, it weighs 1.230 grams of solution. So that means I get one, two, three, zero grams of solution. And I should use blue instead of green. I always use blue instead of green. One, two, three, zero grams of solution. Well, now I can get the mass percent pretty straightforward, can I? So for the mass percent, I know Grams of H2SO4 would be 367.8 grams of H2SO4. And we have 1,230 grams of solution. And we just multiply that by 100%. And looks like I'm going to get 29.9. H2SO4 by mass. Yeah, it's about 30% sulfuric acid. Now, just full disclosure, I don't know all the battery acids anymore. This is an older problem. They might have changed, right? Batteries are trying to constantly get better, but it's around 30%. Moality. All right, how do I do moality? Moality is moles per kilogram, right? I need kilograms of of uh, water here. Well, in my one liter, so in one liter, we know it's 1,230 grams of solution and 367.8 grams of H2SO4. So if I take my 1,230 grams of solution minus my uh, 300, 300, Where's my button? There's my button. 367.8 grams H2SO4. I'm left. Oh, wrong button. I'm left with, looks like 862 grams of water. All right? Which is 0 0.862 kilograms. So my molality. My moles of sulfuric acid were 3.75 moles. My kilograms of water is 0 0.862 kilograms of water. And so my molality happens to be 4.35 m, little m, H2SO4. All right, which is larger than the molarity because it's not that dilute. It's 30%. 
All right, last one, number 10, 5% NaCl by mass. So 5% NaCl by mass, that means I have 5.0 grams of NaCl per 100 grams of solution. Also, it's aqueous, so that would be 5.0 grams of NaCl per 95 grams of H2O. So both of those are, are good. So we want the molar, molality and the mole fraction. So two things. I have an extra I in there. You can calculate molar, molality and mole fraction. All right, molality first. So little m, little m is moles of NaCl per kilogram of H2O. And right now I have 5.0 grams of NaCl per 95 grams H2O. Two simple conversions. First one is uh, 58.44 grams of so 58.44 grams of NaCl is one mole of NaCl and and we know that a thousand grams of H2O is one kilogram of H2O alright so we just gotta do a little bit of math here 5 divided by the 95 times 1000 divide 58.44 and I get 0.901 0 0.901 um, little m n a c l and there's my molality then we have mole fraction well now I didn't do that individually so now I'm going to do them individually so I have 5.0 grams n a c l and we know it's 50 8.44 grams of NaCl is one mole NaCl and that'll give me my moles NaCl which happens to be 0 0.0856 moles and then we have water I have 95.0 grams of water 18.02 grams is one mole and so 95 divided by 1802 gives me 5.27. So the mole fraction of NaCl is going to be equal to the moles of NaCl 0 0.0856 over 0 0.0 eight five six plus the uh, the five point two seven and that will equal oh eight five six divided by oh eight five six plus five point two seven I got point zero one five one six oh and that would be the mole fraction so hopefully this video makes sense hopefully it cleared everything up 